What's up guys, after the long await of seeing the new Franklin Paddle teased by JW all summer, it's finally here. But after playtesting, my question is, how on earth does JW use this thing? For the specs, we have two paddles, a 14.5 and 17 millimeter version. The things that these paddles both have in common are that they're both polymer cores, both carbon fiber surfaces, and they're both the same shape as the previous generation Franklin, which means that they have 5.6 inch handles, which are great for two-handed backhands. The 14.5 has a 4.25 inch grip circumference, and the 17 millimeter is a 4.5 inch grip circumference, which is very chunky, and I think a lot of people aren't going to like it, especially women if you have smaller hands. The weight ranges from 7.6 to 7.9 ounces on the 14.5, and the 17 is 7.9 to 8.3 ounces. As you can imagine, with the 17 millimeter being thicker, the swing weight is quite a bit higher, around 120, which at the net you definitely notice your hands being a little bit more sluggish. The 14.5 came in at around 113, which is actually pretty manageable for hand speed and is about average for most elongated paddles. Now, the worst part about the build quality of this paddle, in my opinion, is that again, Franklin decided to leave the exposed polymer on the top and bottom portions of the handle. As you guys know, I'm fed up with this. Companies have been starting to fix it, but a lot of them still cheap out. And I figured with Franklin having taken like two years to update their paddle and making such a big noise about updating this thing, that at the very least they would have covered that up with a piece of plastic like some of the companies are doing right now. But instead, the handle still feels very thick on the 17 millimeter. The polymer is very evident when you press your thumb into it, and it just feels cheap. Franklin absolutely does not get a pass for this. No one gets a pass. I'm tired of seeing it. It's cheap. It's lazy. Just stop. One of my biggest gripes about this paddle is the grit. For the longest time, players were begging Franklin to just make a raw carbon fiber paddle, but cheaper than everyone else. The market is now flooded with them, and Franklin opted to release a paddle that does not resemble raw carbon fiber in the slightest. They're calling it Carbon STK and claiming that it has more traction on the ball than any other carbon fiber paddle on the market. After spin testing, the Franklin 14.5 was 1393 RPM and the 17 millimeter was 1316 RPM. Clearly, it doesn't compete with the high tier T700 paddles. What's even more interesting is that when you put this under a microscope and look at the lines on the paddle, it looks like a liquid that hardened on the face. Then, when you put that microscope on the center of the paddle, it looks very smooth. So the area that you hit the ball most doesn't have the amount of texture that it does on the outer layers of the paddle, which just doesn't make any sense to me. Clearly, Franklin was trying to be different by making these paddles 17 and 14.5 millimeter, as well as trying a new surface, but I have to wonder how were these being tested and why is it that this is what they landed on? As semi-annoying as it is to see a market full of copycat raw carbon fiber paddles, it has been proven to be a great surface when it comes to spin. The vibe I've gotten from Franklin is that they aren't trying to keep up with the rest of the market and they don't release paddles very regularly. If that's the case, why not go with something that you already know works great and then just make it cheaper than your competition, just like the Franklin Signature Paddle? Another pet peeve of mine is that the paddle is marketed as having a T700 face. Even if this really is T700 with a different coating on it, surely Franklin knows that almost everyone in pickleball knows T700 to mean raw carbon fiber, like carbon, electrum, and yola, and so on. So to me, it feels like they chose to use that word to convince people that this paddle is something that it isn't. Anyways, Rant aside, while the numbers aren't great, in doubles it wasn't really a deal breaker. I could tell there were certain shots I couldn't do as easily anymore, like rolls at the net, thirds weren't as aggressive, and drives were much more flat than other paddles. But outside of that, it wasn't a huge problem. For singles, it was very evident how much spin I was missing, especially when I would jump back to my 003 or a Hyperion, which both have phenomenal spin. Where both of these paddles exceeded was control. The 17 millimeter is truly an awesome defense paddle. I would put it up there in my top five softest paddles I have used to date. Resets midcourt, dinks, or blocks all felt very easy. Even on the 14.5, I felt similarly. While it does have more hitting power, it 
didn't feel that much more aggressive, especially if you compared it to other 13 millimeter paddles on the market. I don't really have much more to say other than that these are both pretty soft, which means as you might expect, power is lacking on both of these. Hands battles felt very hard to get an edge in because there just isn't enough pace behind the ball. Even though the 003 is a very soft paddle, the pop feels more firm and crisp off the face, while this feels like it just squishes and doesn't pop off very quickly. It's hard to describe without you hitting them side by side, but the best way I can explain it is that the Franklins just feel dull when you hit the ball. So I'd mark both of these as control paddles with the 17 millimeter being particularly soft and awesome for defense, but as soon as I wanted to speed up the ball, hit a put away, or engage in a hands battle, I was anticipating that I was probably going to lose that fight. Both of these are softer than the original 16mm Franklin Signature Paddle, which has noticeably more pop and power to it because of the fiberglass face. What I can say is that these carbon fiber paddles are probably a bit more forgiving than the fiberglass version, but that's to be expected with these materials. I really don't have much to say about the sweet spot. It felt about average and there really wasn't anything standout or terrible about it. Usually I don't have much to say about durability, but either I got a defect or the durability on these is very poor. I noticed that after two singles play sessions with the 14.5 that anytime you hit it near the edge guard, it would make a horrible cracking noise similar to how it sounds when you have a loose edge guard and you hit the edge but I kept checking all the edges and nothing was loose. A viewer even messaged me and asked me if I was having the same issue because his was doing the same thing. By the time I got to my second doubles play session, I noticed that the edge guard was starting to come loose ever so slightly, but you had to put quite a bit of effort in just to make it wiggle a little bit. At that point, the paddle had hardly been used. A couple play sessions here and there, otherwise it was just sitting on my shelf while I was testing other paddles. So it's not like it sat in a cold or hot car. By the end of that second doubles play session, the edge guard was almost entirely loose around the entire paddle. I'm willing to admit that perhaps mine is a defect, but Franklin has never been known for exceptional build quality, and I have a feeling that didn't really change here. Anytime I would hit it near the edge guard on the 14.5, everyone on the court around me could hear that noise and they would comment on it. Yes. My 17 millimeter never had any of these issues, so it did feel much more solid to me, but who knows? It's hard to say if it's a defect or if the build quality just hasn't improved. So after using these paddles, I have to wonder what the testing process looked like for these. I can't imagine that any professional player hitting these told Franklin it should be sold. Spin is mid-tier at best, the paddles are soft, and durability seems low. I don't understand why they took so long to release this either. They could have taken the shape they had, given it a raw carbon fiber face, and then did things like adding more glue for the edge guard and a reinforced handle, sold it for $130 or $150, and it probably would have sold amazing. All they had to do was improve some small quality of life things, make it a little bit cheaper, and people would have went nuts, especially around four months ago before the market started really getting flooded with all these raw carbon fiber surfaces. But instead, what we got was a subpar surface material and a similar build quality as the previous generation, it seems. It also has to make you wonder, if Zane Navratil opted not to renew his contract with Franklin and neither did Leia Jansen, was this paddle part of the reason that they didn't renew? All the Franklin players have been stuck with the same fiberglass surface for years, and the competition has been advancing significantly. Not to mention, it's a very well-known fact that pro players using the fiberglass version would bring six or more to a tournament and use a new one every single day because of how fast the grit wore out. I'm purely speculating on this, but if I was a pro player, I could not imagine trying to play with this at an elite level. There's so many options on the market that are way better performing. I'd be pretty disappointed if this is what I waited several years for Franklin to create. Even watching JW, I feel like he hates it. Watch these clips of him from his most recent tournament. Over the net when you're coming above it at your knees. It's that court. Oh. Johnson didn't move his feet there, just stuck the paddle oh. out. <laughs> oh, my a lot, lot goodness. Of scrambling, a lot of wildness. Oh, JW was ahead uh, of it. Oh. 
the chaos. Nice jab reaching in from Navertil as that one got floated. Let's reset. Ooh. Oh. I'm waiting for him to. But, <laughs> but it was. It was a little bit more unorthodox as far as how it came off the paddle. In almost half of those clips, he wants to throw or snap the paddle. If someone can watch that and really tell me that it looks like he enjoys that paddle, well, I don't know what to say. I've never seen JW angry or want to break a paddle, but ever since he started using this, he seems to be much more frustrated than normal. Not to mention that their other sponsored players like Georgia Johnson and Hayden Patrick Quinn are still using the old Franklin signature. So if this truly was a big upgrade, why didn't they switch? I know many of you are going to say the paddle doesn't matter, pros can play with anything. And to some extent, I think that's true. But I've talked with a number of pros this year and a bunch of them would much rather be playing with something else other than what they're signed with currently. So to me, that goes to show that in the negotiation, the money comes first and then paddle performance is second. So yes, while they can play with it, it doesn't mean they're happy using it. Don't get me wrong. I don't think this paddle is the worst thing that's ever existed. It's not an Onyx Z5 and it's not like the Adidas paddles. But at $150, it's got to be one of the most mediocre mid-tier paddles I've hit to date. I would never pick this over other options on the market right now. In the same price range or cheaper, you have the Head Radical Tour Co., the SOK Halo, SOK Omega Max, now, that does need lead tape, so if you're not interested in using lead tape, I probably wouldn't recommend that. The Diadem Icon, Gearbox GX5 or 6, Selkirk Amped, Vulcan V560, and Grooven, which is technically $10 more, but it would be well worth it to spend that extra $10 over the Franklin. Of the options I just mentioned, I think the Head Radical Tour Co., SLK Halo, and Grooven both blow the Franklin out of the water in almost every regard. I'm sure there are going to be people who buy this and find it perfectly acceptable to play with, but I personally won't be recommending this to anyone when there are far superior options in the same price range. It's unfortunate because I was really hoping Franklin would turn things around with this paddle. So there you guys go. Those are my thoughts on the new Franklin. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to click like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.